when in college, I was like, you know what? Well, why don't we try to be a little bit different? You know, why don't we try to be a little bit different version of Mateo? You know, instead of staying in my room all the time, let's go out and meet some people. Let's go talk to someone I never had. It's, it didn't really like stem from anything, but it kind of just came of us like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of staying in my room all the time. I'm sick and tired of staring at a video game screen. You know what I'm saying? I think this vision came from when I matured and changed, you know, because if you asked me like freshman year, I would probably would have like loved to stay in like my, my room. Right. Right. Think about, but then like around sophomore year, I matured and that's kind of where I'm putting that maturity now into, you know, stepping away from being inside all the time to branching out and meeting some cool people. So that's kind of where like my visions came from, just like maturing, you know, and really developing into myself. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what is going on? What's up, bro? Yeah, I'm starting to make sure everything's set up. Give me one second. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That's amazing. Hi, bro. How you doing? I'm great, man. I just got back from a vacation in Wildwood at my friend's beach house. I mean, it's pretty great, actually. It's Wildwood, Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how about you? How you been? How you been? Amazing, bro. Um, I apologize if my internet connection drops out at any point. I'm, if I, I'm in a in a village deep in India. So yeah, I, I saw the link. Yeah, no, because I was reading like the email <laughs> link and I, and I said like eight forty five p.m. and I was like, what? And it said you were, uh, I that? think, in India, right? Yeah, yeah. It was really. <laughs> yeah, I was like eight forty five. I was like, why he told me eleven fifteen? I was like reading. I was like, oh, he's probably in a different time zone. Yeah. Oh, I thought it. I thought it automatically converted because um, I think I. I put it in like IST, so I zoomed like it just updated where it was. Mm -hmm. Amazing, bro! Amazing. Yeah, I don't know um, New Jersey geography too much. Um, I know that I I actually started exploring Jersey a lot more when I got my car. Um, when I started driving a year ago. Now that I got my permit license in February, I've been driving around Jersey a lot, just like meeting people around. So I've gotten to yeah. know it a little bit better. Like we'd go on hikes up in north and stuff. So I'm getting a little better at knowing it. But uh, Wildwood is that? Down south? It know, is down south, yes. Amazing. You've been there before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, I've been last year at my friend's beach house, and then I've also, like, just taken vacation down there. Yeah, yeah. I like the beach. Wildwood Crest, to be exact. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Uh, I went down to... I don't go to the beach most of this day, but I went down to um, Deal. You know Deal, New Jersey? Yeah. I do not, know. It's it's pretty close to Ashbury Park, but it's, like, a nice private area. Oh, you know Ashbury Park, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, deal, it was near there and it was a nice beach I actually did a podcast on the beach which was a lot of fun but um, yeah man beaches are cool too um, We've I went to a couple out here in India because when we first landed we stayed in Delhi for a bit and we see our grandparents and then we flew mm -hmm. down south to a place called Goa and that's technically like the beach area of India uh, think about it as like the vacation spot like movies are shot there everything. and we ended up going there and it was the monsoon season so it just rained three days nonstop. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, man, thank you for coming down today. Uh, we have a pretty pretty long history. Um, I remember, I think, I probably first met you pre-K, preschool, we're like three or four. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, or like junior <laughs> kindergarten, something, something like that, man. Yeah, I mean, we're both lifers at Penny, so I had CHP. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I believe you wore too close first couple of years at chp um i, I think we like we, we i feel like we really started talking once when we got to like more like middle school like that's that's what i really like that's what i really see like middle school like know. fifth sixth seventh and eighth and then all the way to like i want to say about like sophomore year then we kind of like you know stopped talking a little bit yeah i remember i think it was you the friend group that you're part of was like you Vivon, andrew and christopher i think was that it or yeah 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 <laughs> pretty much yeah and then somewhere in like seventh grade, we started all in grade together. So that I think we had this. I, I think we had the same homeroom. That's why, right? Seven A, seven yeah, A. Yeah, seven yeah, A. Yeah, and then I'm pretty. Didn't we have the same one in eighth grade too? Mr. Sicario. Oh, then no, 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 no. But yeah, I know we were so pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Because I think at that point everyone was together. We're always like going and playing basketball together. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Together. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time. Yeah, we haven't been in touch much over high school, so how are things changed in the, the four years following after this week? You know, 
Not see. Okay, I'm gonna say like not really a lot because I feel like it hasn't. But in reality, I feel like I probably have changed a lot. Right? Obviously, I feel like I matured. Like you know, naturally, you know, I'm 18 now. I'm not like the same person I went in. Um, I'm more prepared. You know, I feel like I I feel like going like from middle school. I I remember like thinking back to like my freshman year. I was just so like unprepared for like everything. Right? But now, like as I like you know went through all these different like situations and just like throughout high school, I do feel like I'm more prepared now for the real, like the real world. You know what I'm saying? How did we get develop that preparedness? Like, what, what was the switch that went into the I don't think really major. Like, I don't want to say I like, obviously like, said that of my comfort zone and did like a lot of stuff. I mean, I did wrestling, you know, I did basketball. I met new people. I think it was just the course of like everything, you know, it, I can't really group it to just one singular event that made me like, you know what? I feel ready now. It just, it just kind of happened, you know? Yeah. That's interesting because I think there are definitely periods of time where I see a big jump in development. I can't really explain it. You know, there's just mm, random parts of growing up and just adjusting to the environment in the world. Like I think one period of time I was just thinking about yesterday was my jump from sixth grade to seventh grade. Um, Cause I remember fifth grade for me was a rough time though. Fifth grade was fucking rough. Um, I remember I was a pretty happy child. Like, I was pretty happy up till third or fourth grade. But I think, I don't know if you remember, like, the class of 5C. Uh, no, I do. I do. It was just, yeah, you, had it was the, just, you had the all girls, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that time was a pretty dark time. And then I something happened. I remember in sixth grade, I, I started becoming friends with the male and stuff. And then mm-hmm. I saw a huge jump in my character and just my sociability and just personal skills in seventh grade. And then... yeah. That, that was great. Ninth grade was also a rough time coming after COVID, but then sophomore year, I just saw a magical jump too. And then all of a sudden, like, things start to play. But that's really interesting, right? Like, how it's really hard to explain development. Sometimes I can pinpoint periods in my life where it's like, oh, yeah, this is a clear yeah. ABC story that I'd see that. But sometimes it's just so random. But... So, um, when you talk about sports, talk about you picked up a lot of sports playing basketball, wrestling. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who talked about how they're grateful that they had sports in their life growing up because there's so many lessons you learn through the sport that help apply to other parts of your life. So I would just say sports have been a, played a role in your life. You know, I don't think they played like a, they play more of like a social factor in a way, right? Because I, so I, I played soccer in like elementary, like middle school, right? Then I, I kind of like played a lot more basketball there, like middle school and freshman year, right? And then, so I like kind of made like a big jump to like step out of my comfort zone and try wrestling. Now, you obviously know that wrestling is kind of like a hard sport to catch up in, right? You know, you need a lot of the technique, right? It's a lot, it's like all the, the drilling that you really can't catch up on if you haven't started when you're younger, right? So going through that, like, I guess like the life lessons I learned is more of just like being confident in myself because I'm used like the wrestling a lot because, you know, that's what I did most of my high school, right? But when wrestling, like, we- when you sit on the mat, it's just by yourself, you know? There's no team element. It's like, you make your mistakes, you win by yourself, right? So I kind of got a little bit of a confidence boost just because I know I've been used to playing team sports, right? So when I first stepped on an individual sport, you know, I was a little, like, you know, nervous at first, but now I feel like I'm a little more confident, you know? So that's kind of, like, the big thing. I Even now, I obviously start with my confidence, but I think because of wrestling, the main thing, or sports in general, is just confidence. You know, that helped me. Helped me. And when you describe, like, confidence... I think it's confidence in terms of. I know. I think confidence can be applied to so many different confidence, uh, so different mm-hmm. contexts. Like confident to feel through fear and do things and not be afraid of, right? Confident to advocate for yourself and do something that's like mm-hmm. challenging something that's expected of you, and then doing that instead. Like what when you think about the like, confidence in your life, what does that manifest in? Stepping out of my comfort zone. You know, I always hear this quote a lot. You you are more more often to regret the things you don't do than the things you do. Yo, and uh, I think sorry. it's kind of good. You lagged out a bit. Can you repeat the quote? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so, like, I always hear this quote, and the quote is, you more often regret the things you don't do than the things that you do, right? So, obviously, you're going to have that one thing that you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? But more often than not, I feel like I've learned that I should have gone and done more things, right? Which is kind of, like, a good thing, you know, that I'm learning for college because, you know, in college, right, you're going to have so many different opportunities to do so many different things, right? So I think now that I have like a little more confidence in myself, I think I'm going to finally go out there and do that one thing that, you know, I was hesitant to try. So that's kind of like the confidence that sports and wrestling helped me. 
And when you talk about the regret case, when you think back to your young self, in what areas of your life do you think you hold the most regret if you're willing to share? Um, so I'm like on the fence about this is like kind of like a main one is like trying in like middle school, right? Now, I, I never really tried, you know, I coasted with like, you know, a couple A's, mostly B's, right? I never like looking back, I, I didn't regret that, you know, but maybe in high school, right? The one thing I regret is just not trying enough, you know, because I'm pretty happy with where I've been but you know there's always like these what ifs you know it's like what if I tried a little bit more you know how much like how much like more better of a student I guess I could have been right but at the same time I'm happy with where I am so I'm like on the fence about it and two it's kind of like being physically active right you know I'm not like a lazy person by any means right but I definitely could have been like more active and taking more of like a charge in like my like health you know what I'm saying that's why like now I like going to the gym because it's now it's like I have a car you know I have all these opportunities like finally like kind of you know, build myself up again, you know? And when you talk so about just, try, sorry, I tell you about hmm. No, you got it, you got it. What are you saying? When you talk about trying more, I guess there's two parts that you touch on, right? First is trying harder in the things you do, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like schoolwork, for example, or sports, like putting more effort in. And the second piece of it is also just trying new things as well, like putting your foot out there and trying new things. So you think you touch on both, right? Maybe both in like three or four parts of the top one piece. Can you repeat the question? You like lag a little yeah. bit. So there's two types of trying more you have. Right? First is yeah. trying harder than things you already do, like putting more effort in, and also trying to do more different things. So how like you you touch on both the things. So I got the both of equal one too. I still don't think I'm understanding the question here. <laughs> which one do you, when you talk about like your confidence piece, like which one do you think is one point two? Like just trying oh, as hard as you can. Oh, okay. okay. Um in this essay, I really do believe that not one is more important than the other, right? I feel like you need literally both, right? Because you need the confidence to go out and do new things. But at the same time, for the things that you do, you do need to try hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's it's I'm honestly down the middle, right? But if I were to lean towards one, I would probably think trying in the stuff that, like, you know, I've already like, been doing, you know? So that's kind of like my a little bit of regret like i'm saying like not trying like more things like back then but just trying harder on this stuff like my schoolwork and stuff like that so when you and talk about sense. yeah that makes sense when you talk about your earlier times when you didn't put as much effort in what do you think was the reason you didn't want to put as much effort in or what do you think drove you to put more effort in now? Like, i know the so piece okay touched on is like the regret piece but also mm -hmm. what what do you think held you back from giving it all finding that your life so in, in middle school, honestly, even up until like maybe like sophomore year high school, I, I still wouldn't really try. And I think it was a little bit of laziness and also not realizing that it really mattered, right? Because in middle school, right, you know, it's like, there's just like these grades really matter. Like I'm learning this stuff, right? Does it really make a difference if I get an A or a B on a test? Like it, like to me back then, it really didn't, you know, being in the top of my class, it didn't make sense to me. It's middle school, you know, it doesn't matter, right? And then that was kind of like... <clears throat> Well, like freshman year, right? I was like, dude, I'm a freshman. It doesn't really matter. And then like sophomore year, it clicked. It was like, you know, we try now so it affects us later, right? You know, we do the hard stuff now so that later on it gets easier, right? So that's why I kind of really started trying more. So it was a little bit of laziness and a little bit of me thinking like, ah, this stuff doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, but eventually, but it does. It unfortunately does really matter. You know, all those tests, everything kind of just like adds up and it does unfortunately matter to your future but yeah so it's more of a realization of the, how things you do now impact you right uh, exactly instant, yeah instant, the the combination of instant delayed gratification how they work together and maybe saying that things don't matter right now it starts to eat you really down the road versus choosing to do the it, things now exactly that that is 100 percent correct yep okay cool um I, I wonder how it must have felt in that middle period Right, because I can I can relate to some of that in my life because I think that COVID is a perfect time and maybe you can relate to it. I mean we were we were in touch during COVID, uh, but I can mm -hmm. outline COVID as a time where I fit your first bubble where what's the point of putting in the effort when there's so much access to this instant joy and instant entertainment and gratitude uh, mm -hmm. gratification, right? Um I think it's right at the cusp of uh, the end of middle school, so there's the least incentive as well to try hard and things. And because you already made it to high school, like you, you kind of think that you're worried about things later, you're online, you're on Zoom, and 
with all these video games that we used to play together when we were young Minecraft. So I think that period of time, I just decided to choose instant gratification over anything, right? But later mm-hmm. down the road, when you start to realize the consequences of that, you get more motivated to do more of the hard things to feel like a great gratification. So describe me what it felt like in the middle period when you started to see some of the consequences of the instant gratification and early journey. Um, so like I said, sophomore year was kind of like my bigging, clicking point in a way, right? Where I don't have an exact date, but eventually I was like, you know what? This stuff matters. So that middle period was kind of like awkward, right? Because I'm, I've been so used to like kind of taking the easy way, right? You know, I'm always like, oh, this doesn't really matter. You know, like what's like, what's a couple, like what's the difference between like a B and like an A minus, you know what I'm saying? But eventually in like sophomore year, I kind of started like a little bit of a college search and stuff like that. But I was like, this stuff does matter. So the transitioning period was honestly like a lot harder than I thought, right? Because it was doing that extra like stuff I don't want to do. It was like putting in that extra hour of studying for this test, right? So it was a lot of just like forcing myself to do stuff. It was like a, it was like a weird time, you know? I, that's the only way I can really describe it, right? The transition period was just like weird, you know? Because obviously I didn't like change that, but yeah, like this amazing like amazing student, right? But you, I definitely noticed some changes, right? That it's just weird you know there's no way to describe it because like during the time it was just all grind you know what i'm saying like grinding for this test oh next test next homework next homework and i remember like thinking back i like if i was like a freshman or in middle school i would have never done any of that right so it, it was kind of like a weird but also like joyous feeling you know during the transition period that's only i can really describe it it's okay that it's weird because i think it as humans it's hard to put our ideas into words like our arm crate mm-hmm. works in 100 cylinders and it's hard to look back and describe some of these events. And I struggle a lot to describe like, what the fuck actually happened in my life. Like, it was I a little bit of a character change, though. Yeah. I, I, I remember it was a little this, bit of a character change, too. Though. Yeah. I remember only one version of you, right? The version I saw of you in middle school that I was on the left side of really trying this. But tell me more about that grind side of you. What, what did that look like? Tell me more about that. You know... <sighs> I feel like on the surface, it wasn't really like a lot of like changes, right? I still kind of like, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's like a class con, right? But obviously I never really took like in class serious, right? But it was like the smaller stuff, you know, taking more notes, stuff like that. So you obviously didn't see how I was in the classroom, right? Because we both went to different schools, right? And around sophomore year, we kind of like split apart, right? So you never did see like how I spent more time just doing a bunch of stuff, right? So if you were to like track like the hours I spent like playing video games and like going out, it would have gone down, right? You didn't know that at the time because you didn't know me, but looking more to trying more, like the one huge thing I never noticed was like, G- like a huge GPA boost. Oh, I nice. think, I, I don't know what I had sophomore year. I had like a, maybe like a three point, like five, like sophomore year, right? Then like my junior year, which I spent the full year trying, I think I had like a three point, like nine, right? Which is obviously like a That's huge it. jump when you look down from the thing, right? So it was just a lot of smaller stuff that I did. Like I was saying before, like extra hours studying and stuff like that it was just like more of like a grind you know like you didn't obviously see that right i got less video games spent less like going outside you know it was just like boom 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 that makes sense yeah where did you find the discipline right and i know that the motivation you talked about was that mm-hmm. you finally had that character shift and you learned that this constant delayed gratification right but at the same time as anyone who tries this for the first time it's easy to slip up especially I've talked to people who go on diets, right? And I've tried some disciplines in my life and failed the fun, right? And it's not easy, right? But is there anything outside of just the, the concept of delayed gratification that motivates you? Or is there, what, what makes you go on try every day to work hard? So, I don't, discipline is something where I do struggle with, right? And like more like school, you know, dieting, exercising, discipline is something that so many people struggle with, right? And I'm not going to tell you that I have an amazing discipline. I slip up all the time. You know, I still like obviously messed up. Right. But it's the one thing that I really like stuck with me is like 1% better every day. You know, I don't need to completely change myself overnight. You know, it's like my discipline was if I can make this small change now and this small change tomorrow and this other small change a couple of days from now, and then it's all going to build up. So, I can't really speak of my discipline because, like I said, I still slipped up, but I was just trying to keep that in my mind. You know, it's like, listen, I'm not going to completely like change, you know, go from this amazing straight A student overnight. It's all this little stuff that helped me build up. So when you really like break down like your goals and like disciplining yourself in a little stuff, like baby steps, you know, 
it became a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I look at discipline now and in my life. It's like, hey, if I go to the gym today, you know, I work out a little bit. Instead of skipping a completely workout, you know, get a quick workout in, I'm getting better. You know, 1% better every day, you know. And it's slowly just helping, like, my discipline and stuff like that. It's like, hey, if I do a little bit of this stuff I don't want to do and do a little bit tomorrow, I'm getting it done. You know, I'm improving. Yeah. I like that you mentioned the small things because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, when they think about improving their lives, they think about the big thing. It's easy to think big, especially in those motivational states, like the 3 a.m. motivation, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm going to fix my life. But um, I think that the small things are actually powerful, less because of the impact they make, but more because of the self-image they create. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you a story with that, right? I think it was the winter of my junior year where I had that a similar time with epiphany in a different area of my life where I wanted to adopt more discipline. And I was experiencing um, at, at the in my sophomore year, in sophomore fall, I had a pretty good social circle. I was really happy with that. And it's for the first time following since my freshman year when I had less of a social life because of coming off of COVID, I was, I was, I was kind of struggling socially because I, I spent so much time indoors playing video games and not interacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And coming to sophomore year fall, I actually managed to rebuild that and rebuild myself and be happy with myself and build a good social life. And I realized that from trying hard to build my social life, it actually worked. And I kind of got addicted to that and I tried to grow my social life way like, so, so big. And that led to more problems in my junior year. But I realized that a lot of it came down to me not realizing what I internally wanted. And I think a lot of, I didn't exactly know what I internally wanted. I, I didn't know exactly what I internally wanted in my junior winter, but I kind of was looking more into like the discipline habits and that I, that will claim to improve my health, improve my, my life as a whole. So it's like taking cold showers, meditating, doing these, these activities every day. And if I look back, it's not like if I meditate for 10 minutes today, it's going to somehow improve my mental health like drastically. But I think by doing it every day, it built the self-image in me, even if it's a small thing. It's like one thing to do every day. It created a self-image in me that lasted and kind of sat in the back of my head, that I kind of look at myself as a better person, as a more like stronger um, person. I think... Doing those small things is even that much more important because it might not make that big. You might not seem like you're making that big of a difference if you're just improving by one percent, but it does so much in the back of our mind. And I think so much of our mind is uh, so much of the world is mental, and you know. So there's so many examples where we, we the placebo mm -hmm. effect, right? Like we tell someone like, this is medicine, but it's not really medicine, and somehow it proves it, right? Because so much of our, our yeah. world is right here. But, yeah, I find that really interesting. So talk to me about. You said that you are recently now focusing more on health as well, um, in addition mm -hmm. to trying to go to school. So talk to me about that. So, I mean, I don't want to, like, throw my family under the bus, right? But, you know, we have, like, a history of, like, heart problems, right? So, like, when I go to the gym, I'm not trying to build, like, this super physique, right? You know, I'm trying to, like, work out to be healthy, you know? So, like, when I've been talking about, like, getting better at, like, this golf, I mean, it's, like, my cardio is, like, maybe, like, an hour and a half walk, you know? Because... I'm trying to look at, you know, working out as kind of like a mental health reset as long as like a physical reset, right? And I think that's kind of what's been helping me stay disciplined with it too, you know, because I stopped, honestly, I really don't care about like my physique as much, right? Obviously, I worked out to try to like look good, but I'm more work out to feel good and be healthy, right? So it's kind of like what I really like. I've, I've like been lazy, right? As a kid, I always like, you know, I put on a lot of weight, right? During COVID and stuff like that. So like me like working out it's just like a really great mental health thing you know like everyone needs like a mental health reset you know when times are tough you know that's why i really enjoy like walking and like like lifting you know it just like i said helps me be like disciplined helps to get healthy helps me look good so it's kind of like you know i just like working out how does walking make you feel i enjoy walking you know um you know sometimes i won't even go without music but most of the time i do you know just walking out in the sun, listening to like relaxing music. It's it's so soothing. You know, I can do that for like hours and hours, right? Like I think one walk, I I think like after school one day, I didn't even realize. I think I walked like two and a half miles, which is like kind of impressive because like I didn't even realize it. You know, it's just so soothing, right? So even now, like most of my cardio comes from just like walking a couple hours every day. I just it's just something I enjoy. And I definitely think when I'm like older, I'm going to go on like a bunch of like nature walks, you know, and stuff like that. I, like I want to like li like retire in a place like a nice like environment, so I can go on like a like you know a nice little hike, stuff like that. I fucking love yeah. walking, bro. Like I've tried, um, 
I've tried a bunch of different things like, just for feeling better and mental health. And I've, mm-hmm. There's nothing more therapeutic that I've found than just going on a walk, specifically at nighttime. I don't know why. But mm. I used to do this at Petty every day. So obviously we're living in a dorm. Uh, I used to do it at yeah. Petty. So every day I'd have this ritual that like an hour or so or 30 minutes before I fell asleep, I would go out with like no music and just go on like a 20, 30 minute walk around campus. And obviously the campus is beautiful. And the most school campuses are pretty nice. And for some reason, it was so therapeutic in a way that it gave me more clarity on my own mind, um, which is a, it's difficult to describe that feeling. But for some reason, whenever I go on a walk at night, I just feel like I understand my mind. You felt similar on you? No, I, I agree 100%. It's, it's like a... Like you went before bed, I went right after school, right? So it was kind of like my mental, like, you know, reset, right? You know, a like long day of school, you know, even before I get home, literally just throw my stuff, put on walking clothes and go out for a walk. I understand like the soothing and easing this, you know, see, I always went with my phone, but like most time I do, but I do want to like, just try like, you know, leaving my phone, leaving music and just kind of like going with my own thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Just like, like you did. I think that's very cool. Nothing wrong with music either. I mean, music is such an amazing part of life. Um, I've had my own story with music. Over the, like I've I've gone periods without music with music, but right now I'm back in the with music period. But I think if you listen to control, like it, it adds value to life. But I think mm-hmm. that when I think about walks, like if, if I, I read about the science behind it, I think it just makes so much sense, right? Um, so if you think about our evolutionary nature, we weren't designed to just sit in a chair. Like chairs are a very relatively new concept. We weren't designed to be sedentary. Um, we were. If you walked and you moved around. You had a greater likelihood of like catching the prey and being healthy enough to, mm-hmm. to get access to food. So your dopamine circuits rewarded for that kind of behavior. I think because of that, um, I think most I've heard stories of some really intelligent people talk about how most of their best ideas came from walks. I think Albert Einstein said that, said that as well. Like just be walking around Princeton and we got most of his ideas from there. I think even when I look at my own life, some of the best ideas and insights I have just came from walks. And and also there's a the piece of just getting outside of the like like three by three house, like three by three room, we're always in. It's like seeing yeah. nature, like seeing as far distances. Like surprising that these days, like we don't really see far distances that much anymore. That's not like as good for like, our vision, but also our our brain, um, and our ability to focus is very um intertwined with our our visual system. So when if you're if you're looking at a screen that's very narrow and you're just focusing around the screen then you're actually going to be able to be a lot more focused, right? You're going to be, because you're if some, you're looking at something so close to you, your man naturally starts to focus more deeply on that. But if you look at a long horizon, like two, three miles in front of you, your mind naturally starts to become more reflective. And then it starts to become bigger. So I think I've been trying to use that a lot more as well. Like when I'm trying to work, like I try to just like stay locked in and like, what I'm doing. But when I really want to like enter a reflective state, I think that's why hiking is so great. It's just like going outside of some place. It's amazing you're able to do that every day. Your thoughts on that? I mean, I never really like thought about it, like you know, too in deeply and stuff like that. But I do uh, completely understand like where you're coming from. I just think like you know, walking is such like a versatile tool used for so many different things. You know, it's used for physical therapy. You know, use a form of cardio. Uses a form to like get like mentally locked in. I just, I think when I'm in college, right? Because I have like a pretty nice campus. I think I'm gonna try to just like you know walk every day. You know, obviously I'm gonna be walking from my like, class to class, right? But I think at night, I'm just going to take, like, a nice therapeutic walk. Because you, you always hear about the stories of, like, how, like, college is, or how people, like, you know, are still, like, stuck inside the rooms, you know, cram studying. And obviously, it's going to be, like, us, you know. But I think it's a good way, like, walking is a good way to detach, you know. That's So I agree 100% with what you were saying. I remember some of my best memories from the winter, or um post wrestling practice. I spent an hour just studying for, like, one specific subject. But I take a 20-minute walk come back and then do another hour of work and that walk between it just it's it's very interesting it makes you feel good mm-hmm. it makes you prepare to just like okay I just finish that about a word about to start my next one but yeah just like the little things you know, like little things we add to our life just make it better when you talk about uh, the mental health you also talk about exercise so how about you talk about the, the mental health effects of counseling just generally going to the gym like, so. so honestly like I can have like a really like bad day, right? But I always like looking forward to going to the gym. You know, it's like that boost of do- dopamine, right? And now obviously like you're in, you know, like for me, like, you know, we're lifting like weight, right? But it's just something about like, you know, working hard, you know, lifting the weights, you know, like going for walks afterwards at all, like in time, just like being happy, you know, stuff like that. 
I find that my mood always improves after like working out. Right. So like some, like a little thing like I want to like try like incorporating, you know, is just like, let's say like I'm studying for homework, you know, cram studying in my room. I just want to like, you know, take like maybe like during my break time, you know, do a couple sets of push ups, Right. Cause I think something about like the blood flow about the body just like, just makes me like happy. You know what I'm saying? Like you literally feel better after working out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's like, so important to try to utilize right because obviously i'm not always gonna be able to get to the gym right but i'd always want to feel good right which is why i just want to try like incorporating that like during like stressful times like my life just like you know detaching a little bit going for a walk you know push-ups you know stuff like that amazing man so you started wrestling at freshman year or sophomore year? Sophomore, year. So- sophomore year yeah so did you just wake up one morning and like you know what i'm gonna get fucking wrestling where did this start from there <laughs> So after basketball season, so basketball and wrestling are a winter sport, right? So after basketball season, I was in the gym at Marcus Prep, right? And usually, like, the main, like, fitness guy who, like, comes in, like, who, like, hosts it, right? He uh, he was a wrestling coach, right? So, you know, I'm in there working out, and he was like, huh, why don't you join the wrestling team next year? And I was like, ah, you know, I'll see, right? So because, like, freshman year, we had, like, that hybrid year. I didn't really get to like know too many people, right? So when it transitioned into the sophomore year, right, I started like obviously meeting a bunch of new people. And coincidental, a bunch of the people I met was one was the wrestling coach's son and a couple of people who were wrestled, right? So I kind of was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll give it a try. So that's kind of what it is, you know. That's why I said before it was like a social thing. You know, I met so many of my friends like when I joined like the like the wrestling team, right? Well, that's kind of how I got into it, you know. It was like, oh, you know, why don't give it a try? You know, my friends do it. I may as well, too. What was your first reaction? Maybe one, two, three practices a week. So I remember. So during Thanksgiving break, right, we had like that full week off. And we started. So Thanksgiving was on Thursday, right? So we had practice on like the first ever time I wrestled. We had practice Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? And gosh, I have never been so sore in my life. <laughs> But at the same time, it felt kind of rewarding. You know, you know, we were always doing the basics, you know, learning how to shoot, sprawl, stance, moving. It was just the basics, right? But I I enjoyed it. You know, it was like a challenge. And it was a fun challenge, though, because it was something I've never done before. I'm doing it with all my friends. You know, we're all sweating, you know. It was hard, though. So just a combination of that kind of what made me want to, like, stick around for a couple more years. Did you ever want to quit? Yes. <laughs> How, yes, how, I, how far deep, like, when you talk about quitting, is it just like as a joke one day or like how far deep did you get like the thought bubble of like fuck? Oh, no, no, no. It was, it, it was most, because I, I, honestly, because I wrestled sophomore year, you know, I got beat pretty bad. You know, I was a new person coming in. Junior year, I did a little bit better, but I still got beat pretty bad. So like sophomore year, you know, it was kind of like a mental conflict. It was like, do I really, I was like, dude, I'm sick and tired of getting like beat. You know, obviously I have a couple of wins here now and then. But I was so sick and tired of getting, like, beat up. You know what I'm saying? All these freaking losses kept getting in my head. But I was, like, it's my senior year. You know what I'm saying? Why, like, stop now? And then so just something about, point, like, point, some, you think the, the first thoughts of quitting came senior year? Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm, they came senior year. Because, you know, sophomore year, I was so new to it. And I was, like, you know what? I'm going to try it again junior year. In junior year, I kind of got a little bit of a better understanding of the sport. So, and then maybe towards the end, I stopped liking it, but I really think it was like senior year, you know, it was around like the time of October and I was like, oh boy, wrestling's around the corner, better start like getting in shape now. Yeah. And then it had its moments, right? But a lot of the time I was like, man, I'm not really having that much fun, but you know, I stayed with it because I think it got me a little bit better mentally, you know what I'm saying? So it was like a battle to stay, but eventually, you know, I didn't quit and I finished out the season. Yeah, I can relate to the October, September, October fear. Of the rest <laughs> yep, of the yep, yep. Um, it hit me off in my first season, so sophomore year, I was started wrestling, and um, I actually it was kind of love at first sight for some reason. Um, I didn't, I wasn't too good at other sports. Like if you remember the days to play basketball <laughs> at CHP. that wasn't too good at many sports. But I found out that. This one didn't require too much hand-eye coordination and stuff, and there's something mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get good at. It's, it's mostly about how hard you push yourself, obviously. It's like, yeah. So I was attracted to that. Um, and I went in, and I kind of told myself that if I could do cross-country, I could do this. So I was kind of going in with the motivation, yeah, I could do this shit, I could do this. 
Um, and then I went for like two weeks. I didn't wrestle a single match. I just kind of did the practices for the first two weeks that I broke my arm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so after that, the whole season goes by, but I'm still pretty invested in wrestling. Like I'm in touch with all the people that are on the team. And um, so coming to every practice, just watching it, what I can do, that would cast them for this and stuff. Um, and I got better into the end of the season, so I was able to just like pop in a little bit, but not much. Um, and because of that, second year, I was pretty set on doing it again. Then October rolled around, I was also like, I, don't, I really don't want to do this again. I, I remember in the back of my notebook, I had this huge pro and con list, and I actually really convinced myself that it was better for me not to. Um, but I think that I look back, it was, it was pretty much cope. <laughs> I was just making excuses for I should have wrestled. Um, like I, I told myself that oh grades are the most important thing like my grades are going to suffer mm -hmm. so it's kind of like bullshit I was telling myself but that was not stupid but I just remember the feeling I guess it's a good it's a bad thing to think what people think to care what people think about you but I just remember I couldn't I couldn't see myself as a guy that quit like, it, it was just too emotional and difficult for me to see myself uh, see for other people to see me as like, a quitter and I think that enough was for me enough for me to push myself to get that season mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I think that I was like I had such a fun time. And senior year was even better. So uh, luckily I made the right decision. But yeah, I can relate to them. It's always it's always hard that the cause for saying what did it feel like for you? It was a mix of different feelings, right? Because I don't like doing like right you on know, wrestling and everything in school. It was like less of a feeling of like enjoyment, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't enjoy doing schoolwork, right? But you do it, right? You know, sometimes you might not always enjoy, like, wrestling or any sport, right? But it's hard. But you still do it, right? So, a lot of the time, like, my enjoyment never came from stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know how we were talking about the delayed gratification? That's where, like, my enjoyment and, like, really came from stuff like that, right? Because it wasn't about, like, what I was doing now. And, like, I always felt, like, this dread. Like, there, like I really hated winter for three years because of wrestling, right? And obviously, I enjoy like the sport, right? But I never like I didn't. I enjoyed the sport, but at the same time, I didn't enjoy like participating in it. If that makes sense to you, right? So, but it, like I'm saying now, it helped me now, right? Which was I don't. I think you touched upon it, but like the really gratification, right? That's kind of like what like the big thing that I've been learning from like school and wrestling was is just doing the hard stuff now, so that later on it affects us, you know. With wrestling, was. 100% of the joy derived from the delay gratification was there any, was there any moment where you like, genuinely like, said this is fun or no? Sophomore and junior year, yes, I said it was fun. Like in the moment, and then, like, during your practice? And during practice, like even after some match. I mean, see, the problem the problem with matches, sorry, is they're too short. They're too <laughs> short. I never really had enjoyment, right? Very occasionally, like during like, like a you know long six-minute like battle, right, that I really enjoy it, right? So, but during practice, you know, they were fun, you know, getting beat up, learning moves. But a lot of it became, like, the reason why I enjoyed it so much is because I kind of felt my confidence increasing after the season, right? Obviously not during the season, because I didn't really think about too much of it. But my enjoyment came from it, like, afterwards when I started feeling, like, better about myself. So that's that's kind of, like, yeah. yeah. When you think back to all your matches, I asked you, if, if I asked you, what was your most memorable match? What's the first one we posted? The like most that. memorable match? Yeah. Uh, June, end of junior year, it was at District, right? I don't know how it works because you guys wrestle at Nationals, right? But we wrestle in, like, the state tournament, right? And every, like, team, right, it gets broken up into, like, regions and districts, right? So this was, you know, my second year of wrestling, right? I just finished up, and I was wrestling this kid from St. John Vianney. And St. John Vianney is really good at wrestling, right? Where, where's St. John and Vianney? I have no idea. But they had, a, but they had uh, Anthony Knox. I don't know if you know him. He's like the number one, like, 126 pound in, like, New Jersey. But he wrestles there. So, basically, they're a really good school. And this guy, he he went, like, 30 and, like, two, right? <laughs> he had a phenomenal record. And I wrestled him in, like, the first round. And this man killed me, sorry. I mean, he, he tagged me. He would, like, shoot, oh, like, take you. me down, let me get back up. He tagged me, bro. So, but at the end of it, I wasn't really thinking. I was like, damn, I hate this sport. I was like, damn, I need to try a little bit more so that doesn't happen again, you know? So that's kind of like, that's kind of like the most memorable thing because I was going into my senior year. But other than that, 
I don't really have any too like many memorable matches, right? A lot of them were like you know short, like very little that I have, like last till six minutes. Well, Mostly they're around like second you're period. Also a wrestling heavyweight, you're getting bumped pretty often. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it, like I don't, really, I don't really have any like too many, like I said, memorable matches. Yeah, how about you? I, I know you wrestled a little bit. Did you have any like things I really like remembered that stood out to you? I remember the first match I won. That was pretty memorable because it was in overtime, mm-hmm. and um. I escaped the last like three seconds, but yeah, it was a. Uh, I will if I look back at the video now. Actually, I could probably find the video and pull it up, but um, it was the guy. If I look back now, he's pretty shitty, but obviously I was pretty shitty back then too. So, so it's okay. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm wrestling him, I'm wrestling him, and I think I score. I don't shoot a single shot on him, um, but I score twice off of his shots. And then he, he scores two of his shots, right? So I was, I was kind of wrestling like a pussy back then, but we were tied neck and neck going into overtime. And I believe in overtime, yeah, we he shot. What happened? I believe that I scored on him. I think I might have taken a shot and scored on him. Mm-hmm. He had two, but then he escaped and then took a shot on me or something like that. But I remember that something happened and I was down by. I was just down by one, um, or I was down by two. Sorry, I, we were tied. So I think he took a shot. I took a yeah. shot or something, but we were tied. Oh, I don't remember the exact details, but he was on me. Like he was on. Uh, he's on top. I was on bottom, and um, I'm like circling around, circling around for like ten seconds, and I'm trying to get out. And then I get out the last moment. So that was pretty memorable because the first match I won mm-hmm. every time. But I think the most memorable one of the previous season was a match against Hightstown. So. As you know, Petty's in Heightstown, so Petty and Heightstown are like rivals. And Heightstown mm-hmm. is a pretty, pretty good school. And um, we had just, um, we were at a try meet and we were with, I think it was Nottingham, but I might be wrong. And I believe we just mm-hmm. lost Nottingham. So um, uh, we, I, I wrestled a pretty shitty match, like probably one of the worst matches I've ever seen. And I got pinned in the first minute. And the thing is, like, if I get pinned by a really good wrestler, I don't, mind too much as long as i did everything I could, yeah right? like yeah if I, exactly if I put yeah. my foot but I, I could kind of feel that i didn't try as hard like he just put me in a cradle and pinned me and i just felt i remember my coach was pretty disappointed in me too he's like if you're not trying hard enough and i just remember i felt so shitty that day but then that was right off that match it was heights down senior night so right after our first match finished all the lights turned off and there's a spotlight on the mat all of heights town's fans came yeah 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 filling yeah. like the bleachers and they were like getting all hyped up and everything and um they came in, they're like music playing and they're um they're warming up in the spotlight and everything. It looks pretty fucking sick. And I'm like starting to enjoy it a little bit. Like I'm starting to although I felt so shitty before, I'm starting to enjoy the sport a little bit more now and I'm mm-hmm. refining like the love I had for initially. And um uh I was the second one up because I was wrestling one twenty and we had one oh six and one thirteen before for the play. I was wrestling one twenty. Um and Spotlight was still on during the match as well, and they all had walkout songs, which we, no one, with private school stuff, like, we don't do much walkout songs, so it was the first time we saw that, so it felt pretty epic, yeah. huge crowd, um, and I remember that our first match, our 106 guy, he's a freshman, so, yeah. but he did pretty well, yeah. but he, he lost, fortunately, and then I went out, and I wrestled a pretty, pretty close match, right, um, I ended up, in the first period, I was up, I think, like, 3-2, something like that, I was up, and then in the second yeah. period, he started to catch up with me, and then, I did some like pretty bad moves and he ended up like getting ahead of me. And then something weird happened in that third period where I'm like, I'm, I'm wrestling top and I'm holding him down for quite a while. And then all of a sudden, I like, I, I don't even remember what I did. Like, I kind of black. I don't remember the moment that well, but I just remember me doing something and he's on his back and I'm like holding him there. And I hear everyone screaming and I hear like the whole like bleachers is going off and he's like a spotlight right on me, like holding this guy down. And then I, it took me like 10, 15 seconds and I got able to pin it. And I was pretty pretty proud and happy of that that moment because like Heights sounds like technically like a much better team than that. So I think yeah. with that I look back at the season, but there's definitely one 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 more memory I'll tell you. This is outside of the matches. Like I know that you said that most of the joy you derived was delayed gratification, but for some mm-hmm. reason wrestling was something that I really, really just enjoyed doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there's this concept I've read about called flow. And I feel like when I go really, really deep in wrestling practice, I enter the square state where it's kind of like a, it frees my mind from my thoughts. I, 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 I'm so locked into what we're doing that I, I kind of stop thinking. And that's such a, it's such a blissful feeling. 
um, to get your mind to slow down. And sometimes, like on those, we have on the Fridays before big tournaments, we do a, a lot more cardio. Like we do things to get our heart rate up, and yeah, just, like be running the whole time, like wrestling, sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. And I reached like a point where I push myself past this like this bar, and it's and yeah. it's like this like blissful flow state that it's just so hard to describe. But when I think about like the best things I've felt in this world, I don't know if anything can compare to that. <laughs> It's kind of like that runner's high, like in cross country, right? Where like, I took a little bit of like psychology and then talked about like pushing past like like your pain receptors to a point where like, you know, you don't even feel that anymore. Like when you just keep like running and people like talk about like that feeling of just like being like pure like enjoyment and like bliss. That's kind of what you're talking about, you know, just like pushing past like your brain and body telling you no, but you keep saying yes. And eventually you just get past it. And it's all like that like enjoyment stage. So I, I like, I understand what you're saying. I personally never like experienced that, but yeah. Have you been close? No, not not, not, like, not can I remember now. Not really. So when you write about runner side, do you know like more of the reasoning behind like how it works? Like, like why why do we experience this? Do you know anything about that? Or? Um, no. I mean, if you asked me like during like the year, I probably could have told you, but like I kind of forgot everything about it from like, the <laughs> psychology. Yeah, all good, all good. But, yeah. Um, do you have so? Wrestling, high school, over and out, a lot of college now. Um, when you think about your current goals with health, with it, that you, you've, you've had these problems with your family and you, you made a vow to yourself that you'd just be a healthy person and you might lift mm -hmm. and walk and just for your mental and physical health. Um, what plans do you have to maybe advance that, maybe keep it the same as you go into college? Like, will, will you ever revisit something like wrestling or kind of sports again in college? I do plan on playing a lot of intramural sports, you know, like not nothing, nothing like crazy, like club maybe, but just cause you know, I've, I've always been playing sports, you know, like I, I started wrestling, you know, sophomore, junior year, you know, played basketball from like, like second grade to freshman year, played a little bit of soccer too. So I've always just been like running around. Right. That's kind of how I, you know, met so many of like my friends. Right. So during college, I'm obviously going to be trying like working out. Right. And I'll also be going for my walks, but I am going to try to get a little bit into the intramural sports scene just as a way to get out there and meet some friends, right? Because my like my goal for going to college is doing so much stuff. I want to be so busy that the only reason why I'm in my dorm is because I'm sleeping. You know, I don't even want to study there. You know, I want to be studying the library. I want to be like going out, you know, walking around campus, meeting so many friends, you know. So it's kind of just like my goals, you know, just and a way for me to branch out and meet people is obviously these sports. I think you meet so many people, you make so many bonds. So that's where I'm also going to try to like, you know, improve my, my physical fitness too. It's just, you know, playing like playing like basketball, with a bunch of like people who suck. Like that's going to be so much fun, you know, like I, that's what I really can't wait to do for college. Just branch out, do so many different things, like meet so many people in the gym, meet a couple like, you know, people I can like get a lift in, you know, that's kind of what I'm really looking forward to. Amazing, man. Oh, yeah. you think about that vision you set for yourself. Have you ever tried to unpack it? I mean, I don't understand. Like, where, where do you think that vision comes from? Why do you think that vision is so important to you? You mean, like, where I'm trying to, like, branch out and meet people? Yeah, like, for, for college. Um, I don't want to say, like, a rebrand of myself, right? But because of, I've always been, like, I never really had too many, like, too much confidence. Right now, my public speaking is fine. You know, I can keep a conversation going with, like, a lot of people, right? But I was always still afraid to try new things, right? Now, obviously, wrestling helped with it, right? But I kind of wanted to be that person, like, for myself, just go out there and do so much such stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to say I've always been, like, a reserved type of person, right? But I spent a lot of time in my room playing video games, you know, doing stuff by myself. When in college, I was like, you know what? Well, why don't we try to be a little bit different, you know? Why don't we try to be a little bit different? different version of Mateo, you know, instead of staying in my room all the time, let's go out and meet some people. Let's go talk to someone I never had. It's, it didn't really like stem from anything, but it kind of just came of us like, you know, what? I'm sick and tired of staying in my room all the time. I'm sick and tired of staring at a video game screen. You know what I'm saying? I think this vision came from when I matured and changed, you know, because if you asked me like freshman year, I would probably would have like loved to stay in my, my room. Right. Right. Think about, but then like around sophomore year, I matured. And that's kind of where I'm putting that maturity now into, you know, stepping away from being inside all the time to branching out and meeting some cool people. So that's kind of where like my visions came from, just like maturing, you know, and really developing into myself.
Yeah, it's amazing. Man. And I think it just makes life better. It's as simple as that, right? I mean, it's more mm -hmm. enlivening. It's more interesting. And it makes your life more exciting. Um, to just go out and meet. Like, if you try so many different things, you'll have so many different experiences. It makes so many different things. That it just, it'll make life more fulfilling. I feel especially exactly. in periods where, not as extreme, but periods where I've leaned more toward that side of me than other sides of me. I definitely felt more of a fulfilling, exciting existence. Um, but yeah, when you think about the steps you need to take to achieve that vision for yourself, what do you think they are? That could be steps you could take this summer, also steps you would assume to take this summer. I don't really think there's anything I can do in summer, you know, but when I get to college, I, you know, because honestly, we haven't really talked too much about college, but I had not been thinking about it. I told myself, Mateo, don't think about college until you get to like the weekend before you have to leave, right? I leave on like a Thursday or something, I think. So I'm not going to start thinking about college until like that week, you know? Like, obviously, I did like my back to school shop thing, you know? I'm like, I'm like getting ready for like my, like fill in my housing form, right? But I really didn't want to start thinking about college because I didn't want to kind of get too tired of it. I don't want to get too drained of it because when I, I told myself when I get there, like the freshman moving first. So when I get to the, that first weekend, I want to hit and run. You know, I want to meet and talk to so many people. You know, so I haven't really been like doing anything to prepare because all the preparation is going to be when I get there. You know, just be like, oh, there's someone who I haven't talked to. Let's go talk to him. You know, so it's it's more of like a mental preparation of just like telling myself that's what I'm going to do. But I haven't been doing anything like, you know, physically. Yeah, you don't really need to because a lot of life is living mm -hmm. in a moment. Right? So see what you feel like right now and make those decisions. But, um, yeah, talk to me about that other side. So obviously we have this side of Mateo. Like, not obviously not really but like this side or type of person that Mateo is where he's going to college and he's doing all these things. But talk to me about what it felt like to be that other version of yourself when you're at home. Right? You talk briefly about that you don't consider yourself a reserved person, but you do spend those hours like inside. You, you mean you mean like when I like didn't really try as much in school as I was talking about, like well, freshman yeah, we, year or sophomore. We talked about that part, but also maybe just a part even more recently in the last few years, maybe when you said you, you described a period of time where you spent a lot of time inside, a lot of time behind the computer oh, yeah. and video games. Like what did that part of you feel like? So in the moment, you know, I enjoyed it, right? Because I because I really became close with people around sophomore and junior year and like the way we connected, right, is just playing a bunch of like, you know, computer and PS4 games, right? And, you know, at the time, that was fine. You know, looking back, I enjoyed those moments. But now I'm wishing I did out and did more. So in the time, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm fine with, you know, playing video games for like four hours, right? I'm fine with sitting inside. But like looking back, I kind of wish I wasn't okay with that, right? Because I don't really have any memories to show for that. You know, I don't have any cool stories that I can like, you know, sit back and tell like, someone later you know that's kind of why i enjoy going out and doing so much stuff right it's for the memories i um, i i can tell you that i play video games with my friends for like hours but i don't have any memories any funny cool stories of me doing that and it's part of the reason why i'm trying to go out more you know so looking back in the moment i was entirely fine with it right like i kept saying you but now i was like damn i wish i just didn't do that which is kind of going to be like my goal going in college. You know, I don't want to be stuck in my room, you know, stuck in my dorm, you know, doing like boring stuff. I want to go out and make some memories. So that's kind of like now what I'm realizing is the important stuff in life. You know, it's, it's kind of like, obviously it's important to try in school. It's important to like, you know, take care of yourself, but I just want to make some cool memories with some cool people, you know, and that's kind of now what I'm striving to do for, you know, I'm trying to less be inside my room, by myself watching movies and more be out there in the world and make some like cool fucking people. You know what I'm saying? To make your life that movie instead. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you mentioned that dissatisfaction piece. You mentioned that mm -hmm. you wish you felt more of that dissatisfaction that you were not okay with it. So when yeah. you talk about like now you look back and like, oh fuck that shit, I used to live like behind my screen all the time. Do you think that dissatisfaction started to emerge while you're still in that lifestyle, but later on? Or did it only come when you adopted this new lifestyle? Definitely the latter. It definitely emerged when I started going out and doing stuff more. Because, like I said, during the time, I enjoy staying in my room, right? But as I kind of, like, started going out a little bit more, getting a little bit more confidence, you know, stuff, I was like, damn, this is so much better than, like, playing, like, video games for a couple hours, right? It's, like, it's a good fallback system, too. Right. That's what I always like, you know, kept it close to me. But like now I'm like, damn, I wish I got out and did some more stuff because obviously you can you can totally like enjoy spending video games with your friends. Right. That's not a problem. Right. But the problem is doing it all the time and sacrificing other elements of your life. That's kind of where my dissatisfaction came. Right. Is looking back, it's 
all the hours I spent doing that, I could have probably done something more productive or more fun with my friends, right? Which is not now where the dissatisfaction came in. You know, it's more of like the realization that I could have like had like done better stuff, which is why like now in like my later years of like high school and now I'm like going to in college, that's going to be like my main focus, you know? Did you get this realization this summer or before this summer? Uh, you know, honestly, so junior year was a grind, right? So it was kind of like beginning of senior year. So junior year was a grind, you know, and I really, after I applied to colleges, I kind of stopped trying in school, right? Like, obviously, I maintained a little bit. Like, I maintained my GPA, but I never was like, got to grind four hours for this test, got to like study, you know, it's like, I'm like, like two hours and it's like, yeah, feel good enough. So around that time, right? After like all my friends applied to colleges, we were waiting to hear back. A lot of them wanted to just keep playing video games all the time, right? They wanted to like get like a bunch of people and just, I don't even remember what games they wanted to play, but they just wanted to play so much stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. Why don't we go out and do some fun stuff? And that's kind of when I realized that, damn, there's more to like hang out with my friends and there's more to life and there's more to making memories and just sitting in front of a computer screen, right? So I was a little upset with my friends a lot of the time because all they wanted to do was just sit and play video games, right? Yeah. But now I think we're all kind of like realizing that there's more to life than doing this. You know what I'm saying? So the dissatisfaction really came in my senior year. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so these technologies that we engage with, like our phones, Instagram, video games that suck up our time, mm -hmm. they're really addictive, obviously, because they, they yeah. take all of the, um, the dopamine circuits in our body and all the hormones and it optimizes for that. Optimize every feature in the video game to a big place, right? It gives us a sense of purpose, sense of brotherhood, sense of competition outside of the real world yeah. in the video game, right? So obviously it's very addictive. Last night, uh, I was in a podcast with my friend and we we're talking about a feature. We we're talking about, uh, have you heard of Neuralink? I have not, no. Yeah, so Neuralink is like the Elon Musk chip that goes in your brain. Oh, uh, oh, the brain yeah, chip? Yeah. Okay, then I, yeah, yeah, I have heard of that. The, 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 I think just a week or two ago, the first, or maybe last month, the, we had the first... Um, first participant who actually tried the tried the brain chip and he was fully paralyzed from the, from the like the neck down but he's able to control a, a computer with his mind now with control cursors control keyboards and actually works now. so it's pretty scary um but building off of that we're having a conversation about the future of also addictive technologies right that the video games today are designed to be so addictive where they're going to be like 100 years from now where there's mm -hmm. brain chips connected to your body where they're literally altering chemicals in your, in your brain then maybe like producing more chemicals in your brain, altering like your feelings throughout your body. Like if it becomes so addictive in the future, are you worried for future generations or not? Yes, I, I am. I mean, but you, you always hear about how like these AI are going to take jobs, right? Now, I am a little scared because of how much stuff is changing, right? And at a certain point, there's it's just going to be so hard to like, you know, make things like so addictive. Right. And it's kind of what I'm looking forward to because I've obviously been like, I've obviously been addicted, like playing video games and stuff like that. But I feel like as people like mature, I think people are going to realize that this isn't always like the best option. Right. So obviously the future generations are going to like, you know, be victims to all these like, really addictive, like stuff, like all like this advanced technology and AI. But I think at a certain point, everyone's going to realize that that's just like not, essential in a way that makes sense right like it's important it's good but i think there's gonna come a time where they're like they're gonna realize like i don't really need this right you, you get what i'm trying to say i, I feel you and it makes sense with video games right because i think most people i've talked to have gone through phases right where they spent a lot of time indoors and they've kind of escaped right and got outside but um, mm -hmm. i think with something like video games it's easier to reach that maturity but the thing i'm worried about is that if you think about something like cocaine right it's not like someone just wakes up and realizes one day that oh yeah this is bad for me and stops right they're they're fucking addicted to it to the point where they have like their the cravings come and the dopamine circuits come and I wonder technologists today are already so addictive mm -hmm. I wonder if it's going to be even possible to reach the maturity to the technology that's extremely addictive like video games hundred point or something like that. that's the thing I'm, yeah yeah you know what do you think about that you know. I think it's kind of funny and scary how fast like technology has been changing right now. Um, there are how often people use it. Cause I remember I didn't have a phone until like sixth or seventh grade. Right. But now it seems like so common that like little kids have like phones. And now the only thing I'm really worried about is them being exposed to young to all this like 
AI and addicted stuff, right? Because even myself, I feel like I was exposed a little bit too young to a phone and the addiction of it, right? But I just, I think as the years go by, people just get younger and younger, get used to technology. And I think that's a little bit bad. You know, I obviously can't tell you about how little kids' brains develop and mature, right? But I just, I just think it can't be good for them, you know? Yeah. That's pretty lopsided. So I think I think it's I think it's a little scary. You know, it's scary how like the, just like the way the future is becoming. Now, obviously, technology is a huge crutch. It's a huge tool, and it's important. Maybe not as important as we make it out to be, but I think it's just really scary to know how it's going to like influence people's like fundamental thinking. You know, as like kids grow up along with all this, I think that they might be developed a little bit like differently, and I don't know how, but I think just differently, and it's kind of scary. Yeah, something definitely happened off of COVID. I don't think it was that bad for us before COVID, but I think something with the algorithm, something with the content, and something with the whole delivery system, right after COVID, it all kind of exploded. And I think a couple of the time that we're all spending inside, mm -hmm. I really see it now around me as a good problem that I didn't notice before. Maybe that's just me being more reflective about it, but I don't know. I feel like these days it's worse. Like, what do you think post COVID? So, so I think that. You mean like with people be like being like on their phone and stuff like that? Yeah. One thing the problem. Yeah. Really so, started, I mean, I, I think it's even been beyond COVID, right? But I do think COVID definitely affected, right? So it's kind of funny that you bring that up because at the beach house, right? During breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we'd all like sit at the table and eat, right? But like it was like nine of my friends, and we'd always make fun of the person who was on their phone at the table, right? We call them a screenager, we call them addicted, right? Because obviously we would all be on our like normally like we're all on our phones like but i feel like it's good to have times where you detach right because i just like my friend next to me his name is victor we were eating breakfast one day he's watching a full movie <laughs> he's watching like he has two airpods and victor you're sitting at a table with eight of your best friends all right i so i do think it is scary how everyone's addicted i'm guilty of it but i do think that having times where we put the phones down like at the table when we were eating breakfast lunch and dinner right no one was on their phones you know it was a time for all of us to like talk and connect and i think that is also like kind of what's necessary and i think that when i get older or even have kids i'm gonna have times where it's like all right no more devices for like a little bit it's good just to like get out and connect with people right that's kind of why i like going out and doing stuff right because i'm with my friends and we're walking around at a restaurant you know we're talking hanging out I feel less inclined to go on my phone. So in a way, I like doing it because I feel like I'm beating my addiction. Just because it's such a huge problem, you know? Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Um, I really hope that we can reach a point where we reach some maturity with the phone. Because I hate sitting at a food table and like everyone's on the phone doing something else. Like <laughs> My sister on Snapchat, I, my dad's, my dad's mm -hmm. on crossword puzzle. And I was like, bro, let's just eat dinner here. <laughs> No, obviously I'm guilty of it too, but I, I do think that having times where you just disconnect and talk with your family is, is it's huge. It's so necessary and it's huge. Yeah, I think it's getting better though. I'll tell you that. Because at first when I started thinking about my phone usage, that was same time, like junior winter and junior spring. Mm -hmm. And that summer, I've really like, it cut that shit down a lot, like significantly. And I'm proud of that. It's one of my biggest achievements that I was able to break that in my, in my phone usage time. But um, I think when I first did it, I'm like, I really felt like an outsider. That not an outsider. I felt I felt very social, but I felt in terms of phone usage, I look around and everyone was using their phone. I felt like I was the only one who wasn't using their phone. So I thought mm -hmm. in a way that I was on this, I was doing this thing that no one really knew about, no one really thought about, and I tried to explain to people like. Using your phone is like good for you. Like you should try to limit it a little bit. I felt like it would just go through one ear, go out the other. But I think that recently, in the last few months, I found that change a lot. And obviously, I don't. I think I used to have a habit of like sticking in people's faces, like giving advice to people. I've I've, I've learned that as a skill not to not do that. But I've learned mm -hmm. in a way to, to navigate a conversation and get there and then find a way we can connect in a way. Um, and then only bring it up then. But yeah, I found that people's opinions about it are shifting. That. Almost everyone I have a conversation with on this podcast and, we, and I'm talking about phone use. Everyone always agrees with me. So I think that in ways, culture changes with time in a surprising way. And I think when you mm -hmm. travel places, like when I travel here, like you realize how different culture really is in places that it gives you a little bit more hope for our flexibility and our nature that some things that we think are so grounded in human beings can change in 10 minutes. Right? And, uh, example, I, I gave this on the podcast as well, but I think it's worthy enough that I'll give again is with tobacco. Um, I don't know if you know this story, but early on, 
in I'm not even talking too far ago, a couple of decades ago, smoking was very, very extremely common, especially in the Western world. Mm-hmm. Right? You go to like, people are smoking on airplanes, people are smoking on movie theaters, at restaurants, and no one gives you a side eye. Kids are smoking, like no one really gives a fuck. Um, but I think we started to do more scientific research and we realized that there's actually adverse health effects, it's fucking up our lungs. It's it's ruining our the health of young children that are developing the normally because of their usage of it at 14 years old. So the, the strategy they, they used wasn't even government intervention. They didn't even use government regulation. What they did was very simple. They used propaganda to demonize it and portrayed it as smoking is this evil thing where these evil men, these fat men in these companies have stacks of money next to them and they're all making money off of addicting you and moving your life. And that simple propaganda coupled with a bunch of other media brainwashed, not even brainwashed, but it socialized kids, younger generation kids, and they're thinking that this is a bad thing, right? And eventually the old people die and the young people grow up. And all of a sudden, if you look at society today, it's so much better, right? You can't smoke in airplanes or airports and restaurants. And even if there's someone young smoking, there's like a, a stigma around it now where it's obviously people still do it in, in large quantities and not a lot of people do it. For but it's fine. I, I get what you're saying, but it's like kind of more frowned upon in a way. I get, yeah. I get what you're saying. And I wonder if, if we start to mature a little bit with the phone usage, do we get to a time where we see like a seventh grader on Instagram and look down upon that as well? Like, if we you know, to- I think, I think it's a good idea. Honestly, I, I kind of understand what you're saying. And I think that would be really cool because Obviously, I, I've like been so much. I spend a lot of phone like time on my phone, you know. And looking back, it's like if someone like if it was more frowned upon, I think that would have been so much cooler, you know. Because at the end of the day, this was like all this was used just to like text and call, you know. Now you have all these like apps, these games, these phones, and it's like it's it, it should be frowned upon, you know. It honestly should be. I, I'm not saying completely get rid of it, but I think that it should be frowned upon to spend as much time as we do. Now, obviously, it's so crucial. Like, it's easier to, like, like you know, with AI, it's easy to do homework and study and stuff like that. But at a certain time, I feel like it should just be, like, a way to, like, we should frown upon and encourage kind of detaching, you know, from that. I think we're getting there because now if we look at society, the stigma is that the guy that's inside on his computer is the way of, the guy that's going out and doing shit is a clue. Cool so I think that mm-hmm. it's getting more and more popular to, like, do epic shit that's hiking or camping or wrestling yeah that might be i think it's definitely at least i, I it's always hard for me because i don't know if these are culture shifts or just my community shifts or i just like enter these people that are thinking the same way and i say oh the world, world's changing and it's really not but i don't know i think mm-hmm. i have hope because it's all if, if you don't have hope like there's, there's nothing else you can really do right so just i guess just keep doing this these conversations keep working to share the knowledge yeah hope that it's all soon right? so Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, dude. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Honestly, it was a pretty fun talk. I actually enjoy talking about like all these like random different things. And I think you did a great job of connecting them. Those were actually really fun. Thank you. I really appreciate it. These are always fun for me to do. Uh, We can always do this again. But uh, I learned a lot about you. I didn't know. Because I know we went that huge period of time. We didn't talk. And a lot changed the time. So I'm glad we were able to link up. I think we should definitely hang out more too, though. You know, I think we should hang out more in person before we go away. All right. Bet that. Yeah, man, I'll be back next week, the 20th. All right. We'll get some lifts in. Mm-hmm. We'll get some lifts in. We'll go, I'll be making a golfing. We'll figure it out, man. Each, we'll figure it out, man. Yep. All, all right, right hey, bro. Take care, all right? right? Peace. If you enjoyed that episode, then you're going to love this episode right here. Make sure you click here to watch that video. And don't forget to like and subscribe.